for me, work, work for me, work that body for me, work, work. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a new week here at Home Cinema King channel. Um, last week we did the quick little one on the ultra high end Barco projectors. Today we are bringing it down to what most of us use and that is the Epson range. And this has been out for a while now. I've only been able to get my hands on it now. Big up to my friend Anthony. This is his unit. Um, I asked him nicely if I can quickly do an unboxing video on it and just do a quick side-by-side -side with the Epson LS11000. This is the LS12000B. B standing for black. Um, the 11000 above me, my personal unit, is white. They only come in the white. This one comes in the black. I prefer the black units, but if you are installing this on a bracket, you know, with a white ceiling, the white looks better. Um, otherwise, black will win hands down most of the other times. Black is the preferred color. So let's quickly go through the unboxing. Let's see what we get in the box. Then I'm going to be putting these up side by side. I'll show you side by side stills of the same. Um, I'm going to set them exactly the same as I set this one and I'll put the way I set it up on screen um, I am by no means a professional calibrator I am in the works to learn how to calibrate projectors professionally but as most of you will know it's not easy it's, it's quite a thing but we did delve into it quite a bit with Barco um, and as with this hobby I'm going to teach myself how to calibrate a, pro uh, a projector professionally and um, this will also be one of the last videos in this room we are moving I am taking this entire room apart so if anyone wants a killer deal on a complete clips THX cinema hit me up um, I'm still not sure if I'm going to be selling this with the house um, this room specifically I don't know am I going to be selling it with the house will the new client pay the additional for this um, that sort of thing so until then if anyone wants a THX system at a kill of a deal let me know hit me up um, my details are in the description go through there make contact okay without further ado let's get into the Epson LS 12,000 I don't know did I touch on this for those who don't know, this, the Epson projectors for me is still the way to go if you don't want to spend crazy money. Um, I've had all of the other ones. Epson just beats the Optoma on black level. Um, where the Optoma I think might be better is on the very quick frame rate for gaming. But this is still a 4K 120 projector. Um, so. This is still where my money is going to go. These are phenomenal, phenomenal units. The biggest pro for me is the color. The color and then um, the black level. So this is also where I think this might beat the 11,000 because they're very similar in spec. This has higher lumens. Again, I'll post the spec side by side so you guys can see. Uh, let me get this side. Going to move this. You know what, I'm going to take them out of the box and put them down there. Very much the same as on the 11,000 packaging. These are not small units, guys. Let me show you. There is the projector. It is a big projector. If you put these... If you put these side by side with a uh, Optoma or the like, this will dwarf it. Just inside you have your little manual. Then to the side, there's not much to their packaging. To the side in here. This is different. What's this little plastic tray? I'll have a look now. There's the Epson projector, same projector, power cables. 
I'm not sure what this tray is. I can't remember getting this with the 11,000. We'll have a look what this is for just now. That's interesting. Okay, I'm gonna take this away. Take me away. Okay, let's get the plastic off. Look, Anthony, I'm taking it off nicely so I can repackage it exactly the same way. And it's not just for you, I always do this. Okay. I like the black. Black's very cool. I'm gonna put the two projectors side by side so you guys can see. There we go. Some additional extra plastic just to protect the vents and all of that. Um, lens cover in front. All of these Epson projectors from the 94, um, the 11,000, 12,000, I think even the 74, yes, has the motorized electric lens. Well, the 7.4, I can't remember. I've done a video on that. Just go back. I can't recall if that was a motorized lens. Might be. But that's what I love about the Epson. It's the only projector at this price point that does come with the motorized lens. Let's take this plastic off. Sorry, Ant. I need to take the plastic off. I'll put it back. I'll put it back. Okay, so at the back of the projector, we have our USB 5 volt 2.0A. We have a service, trigger out, LAN cable, Optoma HDMI 300MA, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, EARC AOC for HDMI 2, RS232C controller if you need that. Power cable always hidden at the bottom. Here are some um, lens functions and where you would set all of that up. It's at the back, so it's quite tricky. You're never going to be able to get there once that is mounted. I want to see the differences on the 11,000. But let's take on top. We have this again, same as on the 11,000. It's black, but it's got this like ruffled up industrial type of plastic. Um, status laser temp, your LEDs when something does go wrong. 4K laser light source. As you guys don't know, the 11,000 and 12,000 is laser light source. Warnings on top. Don't look into the lasers, that's the warning. There's the front. Let's take the 11,000 down and see the differences. Okay, as you can see, these projectors from the front, absolutely identical. Except for the color, they are the same. Sorry for the white messing around of the focus there. This one is a bit dirty because it's my own. Um, and it was installed so again black just keeps cleaner than the white does both of them are the free lcd 4k laser 4k laser being exactly the same let's have a look at the back 100 percent identical no differences same inputs same everything same dimensions so let's see if the proof is in the pudding okay so this is my 11,000 projector before we take it down just quickly wanna just go through so you guys can see um, the color pop different contrasts Let's go to the main menu. I'm running Apple TV as you guys know. 
let's just show you what we are doing on the video and audio HDR 10 plus enabled 422 um, Apple TV for some reason does not do 444 um, yeah only downside that I can find using Apple TV I would love to do a full 444 so you can see all of them have the backlit remotes which is cool button on top here there you go push that and backlit so we push the menu now we can see the settings that I have on this and I'm going to copy them over I'm actually taking a photo now so I can copy them over exactly the same. So we do review both projectors the same. Light output, if, let's go just down. If you're asking why 75%, it for me is the perfect ratio where it, the projector just stays quiet. Let me give you an example. As soon as we bump this up, listen to the fan. it becomes noticeably louder. Just going down to 75. Can you guys hear that? So that is the reason, and it's the only reason, because you want your noise floor as low as possible. So that's how far you can ramp it before it gets a bit loud, and the colors for me are still bright enough. I have my colors on Vivid. Many of you would ask why Vivid. I did go down on certain places. I like that color pop. Um, you might find it different. You might like cinema. But I don't want to change now because I'm going to change everything. But I just feel it a bit dull. I do like my picture a bit exciting. Brightness 55, contrast 50, saturation turned, sharpness I think is down very low as well. So 888 across the line. Um, I'm going to make all of these exactly the same. Let me just take a picture again so I can export my settings to be exactly the same. Um, all in frame interpolation and that stuff I put off I do not like it dynamic contrast some don't like it this is when it goes on a dark or a light scene and it adjusts automatically I like it but I like it to be quick I don't want to notice it too much image enhancement preset 3 noise reduction all of that off yeah, I'm gonna load the blu-ray Blu disc and we will test that it is the best thing to do the best thing to test will be my Dolby Atmos demo disc because we will not get flagged um, because these are Dolby's own demos and not movies etc so let's stick to one let's do the horizon because there's a lot going on so we will get contrast and all of that and we will do the same for both right now you're listening to where cinematic audio has been because we are so used to hearing sound this way we don't notice that it is merely a fraction of what its potential could be. But what if sound could be extraordinary again? precisely move in any direction within this theater. Whether the sound sweeps from the back, it's all the way in front, arcs overhead, or moves anywhere in between. Today, you will feel every dimension. How does that sound?
Okay, so it's what Epson LS12000 in. Um, it just guided me through some small setups now. I thought, let me show you guys this. When you have a motorized lens, look how easy this now is to, you know, no getting up on the ladder anymore, getting these things, you know, a bit left, bit right. You just sit here, motorize it, um, go through the different lens setups push lens you'll get focus again zoom so I need to zoom out a little bit more, more. so then I push lens again and shift and I can go with left and bring it down so I'm still a bit over on the zoom so we just push lens again till we get to the zoom go out bit more I think that might be hmm, let's see down left I'm not gonna do this super super finicky because this is just to test and then it's going back but the problem is I am OCD so I'm gonna get it quite close so we we more or less there we good enough to test okay and that's how easy it is with a motorized lens um, done. So let's quickly just check the focus one more time. Go focus. So what I do on focus is try and look at the text. Go out and then go go out to both sides. See that's out to the one side. That's out to the other side. Now small increments. Ah, there we go. Out again. So back. There we go. And that is sharp, very nice. Um, so that's a basic setup. Now we can go completely out from that. And we can look at our other set. Well, let's look at this out of the box quickly. I want to go back to the Apple stuff. So this is on Apple before we've done any changes now. Let's just see if it's stuck to my original thing here because the auto feature sometimes gets changed to 420. So we'll just change this back to 422. It's going to do its testing. There we go, 422. Okay, so out the box, this looks more or less the same. I am not noticing any big changes between the two. Very good, but I can make this look even better. I'm missing a bit of pop that I would normally like. Oh, guys, if you've not seen this movie, This Afraid, epic movie, epic. I loved it. Okay, so let's let's quickly look at the settings that is out the box, and compared to what my settings were on my 11,000, I'm gonna go straight to the drop. So they have bright cinema. So immediately I will change this to vivid and we should get that pop. Okay. Just gonna look at the pictures I took on my phone so we can make sure we get these settings the same. And brightness. Brightness I had on 55. Okay, next, contrast, yeah, we leave that 50, saturation, this is on 60, I mean mine was on 60, let's go up, okay, tint, we leave the same, what is the sharpness at? I had my sharpness all 8. Let's do them the same. White balance, I didn't change. Frame interpolation, I had that at off. Okay. Then light output 75, the same. 
dynamic controls, high speed, the same image enhancements. This is at three um, MPEG reduction. I have mine off. Then super resolution. Well, let's just go back. Um, auto contrast enhancement. Mine is on eight. Okay. Okay. That should now all be exactly the same. Let's just go from the top one more time. Seventy five brightness. 60. Okay, this looks all the same. I'm just going to scan over these just to see. Okay, there we have them set to exactly the same now. So, let's, on the Apple, it's brighter. The image is definitely brighter. So on my settings, I can actually, the stuff that I ramped up for more pop, I can actually ramp down a little bit on this projector. Am I seeing a huge difference out of the box? Just, you know, not major, it's not hectic, um, but there's definitely, there is more contrast and there is more just more light output. It's just a brighter projector. Um, am I sold on it? Not yet. Let's jump. Let's jump into the demos we did. Yeah, there's definitely a bit more pop to it. Let's do the Ryzen demo. listening to where cinematic audio has been. Because we are so used to hearing sound this way, we don't notice that it is merely a fraction of what its potential could be. But what if sound could be extraordinary? Again, Precisely move in any direction within this theater. Whether the sound sweeps from the back to all the way in front, arcs overhead, or moves anywhere in between. Today, you will feel every dimension. How does that sound? hearing sound this way, we don't notice that it is merely a fraction of what its potential could be. But what if sound could be extraordinary? Again, Dolby Atmos, 
audio can precisely move in any direction within this theater. Whether the sound sweeps from the back, to all the way in front, arcs overhead, or moves anywhere in between. Today, you will feel every dimension. How does that sound? So I definitely feel that on this projector I might run my settings a bit differently. I did keep them the same now so we can have, you know, apples with apples. But that being said, this might be good to go down to maybe Bright Cinema. Yeah, the contrast level is good. So on this projector, um, I know I'm going to get roasted by some of the guys while I'm running, running Vivid. I like my picture a bit exciting. I, you know, I like a bit of pop there. Um, but I think that, let's go back to Apple, uh, installed. Um, yeah, this bright cinema might be it. I think that is very good for this projector. It looks very natural. Um, it's not oversaturated in color. I want a little bit more pop, but that one can play around um, to get more pop out of this projector. Um, so, yeah, let's get to the conclusion of this video, but it is a very good projector. Um, I think I will get one for myself in due time after we've done the whole move. Okay, big thank you again for Anthony for letting me unbox the projector, quickly pop it up and just A, B them quick. Um, I did not have a lot of time with this projector, but I could go through a few things um, to make up my mind. So everyone's been asking me 11,000 versus 12,000. Of course, there's a lot of reviews online saying that 12,000 is that much better. Now look, the 12,000 is better. Is it that much better? I don't think so. Um, I think the 11,000 is just as capable. Obviously, there's more contrast, more NC lumens and that sort of thing on the um, 12,000 than the 11,000. So it is the better projector, not just on paper. As you guys know me, I do not live on paper. I live in the real world. So I like to see them with my own eyes and listen with my own ears. In this case, yes, the 12,000 is better. Is it that much better? No, they are still very comparable. In South Africa, there's not a huge price difference between these. Um, there used to be a big price difference, but now they brought it more in line. Um, I'll just check my facts, but I think it's about 10 to 15,000 difference on these pre projectors. So both of them are more or less in the 70 to 80,000 Rand, which is still a lot of money. But playing in this realm, that is an affordable, very good quality projector that will knock the pants off any of the competition and from here always i say then you jump to the jvc's and the sony's and then from there you jump to the sims or the barco that we did the training on last week so horses for courses pick your poison where do you want to be in this hobby this i think is going to be where most people are going to play and you don't need to feel bad about this these projectors are phenomenal. I use them myself. Epson is my go-to projector before we start spending big moolah. So as a conclusion on the Epson LS11000 versus 12000 projectors, I thought let me quickly just add in this little segment where we quickly go through spec just of the two models. So basically, as I said, the 12000 has a lumens of 2700. The 11,000 has a lumens of 2,500. 200 newmans, negligible. I actually feel that the 12 and 11,000 are exactly the same. Just the 12,000 has been tweaked and tuned a bit more. So they're running that just at a higher level, um, which unfortunately only they can do unless you are technically know how, how to do that. Um, contrast spec, there's quite a big one. So it's 2.5 2, 2 million to 1, 
on the 12,000 and it's 1.2 million to 1 on the 11,000. So there is more than double up. I could see a difference in contrast. Was it double? I don't think so. Again, guys, like I always say, take speck on paper of a grain of salt. You don't know how it's been tested. They might have gotten to those numbers, but you don't know how they got to those numbers. So in real life, yes, there is a difference. The 12,000 is brighter. Yes, the 12,000 has more contrast. Are you going to notice it? You are. Is it worth the extra spend? Only you can answer that question. Um, so basically, it's between 10... Excuse the machinery, guys. Um, daytime working, so just excuse that. So yeah, it's about between 10 and 20,000 Rand difference, depending. But I see in the States as well, it's about a thousand dollars difference. About the same yet, it's more or less the same. You need to decide what that thousand dollars or 10 or 20,000 Rand is to you. If it makes a huge difference, go for the 11. If it's not going to affect you that much, go for the 12. It's actually as easy as that. You're going to be happy with both. They are both absolutely phenomenal projectors. Take my word for that. Um, so, cosmetics, black case, white case, and while touching on that, the add-ons, that little back panel, it comes, this is the 12,000 now, it comes with a chief mount and a decorative cable covering for the rear, which covers the input terminal area. That is what that back piece was. Again, are you going to use it? Maybe if you've got it overhead and you see the back, but like with all these projectors, most of them I do a box. Um, so you're not going to be seeing that. The big one here for me, and actually this I did not know, so we're mentioning it now. Um, the 12,000 adds an anamorphic lens support and Bauer and Wilkins Cinema Picture Mode. So, that makes a difference. If you're going to be doing Cinescope, ultra wide, aspect ratio, that's going to make a kicker there. So, if you're just going to be doing 69 and you don't mind the black bars, at least 11,000 is fine. But if you want to go anamorphic, 12,000 is going to be the way because there they add the anamorphic lens support and the Bowen Wilkins cinema mode. I don't know what that is all about. It must be like the clips mode on the Onkyos. It means absolutely nothing. Might set it up for you a bit, bit easier, but it's a, it's a way to sell something. So the big things for me here is do you want the extra contrast? Do you want that slight extra bit of brightness? And are you going to be doing anamorphic? You need to answer yourself those questions. Guys, that's it. That's all I can tell you on these. They are both brilliant. Pick your poison. See which one fits your pockets. Either way, you're going to be happy with these. They are brilliant projectors. They are where I start. Or I might do for a client the 9400 as well. That's still a viable option. That is bulb. I did the comparison on that versus the 11,000. If you want to go back and watch that video, I'm going to put a link in the description below. Go and check that. There's a big difference there. Going from 9.4 to 11, but from 11 to 12, it's a bit of a, you know, 9.4 to 11 is a big jump up. But then going 11, 12 is like one step. One little step. Guys. Nice. Hope you liked it. If you did, please like and subscribe as always. Hit the bell icon to be notified of next videos. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.